So welcome everybody to our Alma Insights ongoing lecture series, this time on using and configuring the Alma General Publishing Profile. This is Yoel Cortex, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris. As we usually do here, we will be going through the actual live demonstration showing this. We will not be looking at a PowerPoint. Uh, we will briefly be looking at the online help here as well. This online help goes through the whole process. I'm going to send this link out to everybody. And those of you watching this on YouTube or via some other video system, uh, you can find this simply by searching for publishing and inventory enrichment, Alma Ex Libris, and it will be either your first result or pretty close to the first results. So I'll send this link out to everybody here, and everybody's got that. Uh, so a few beginning comments. When we talk about the publishing profile, when we use the term publishing, what we really mean is exporting. It's the term publishing really refers to exporting data. And the Alma publishing profile let's say before that even, there are different types of publishing profiles. Uh, if we look here, we have a filter here of publishing profile type. We're going to talk about how we get to this page in a moment, but until then, suffice to say that there are three different types of profiles, publishing profiles, and we're talking today about the general profiles. Uh, the RSS profiles provide an RSS feed. The built-in profiles are ones which already are at least partially pre-configured for very specific situations, such as publishing to OCLC, uh, publishing to Google Scholar, publishing to CDI, publishing to Primo. Uh, we're not going to be talking about those today. We're talking about the general publishing profile. The general publishing profile, as we stated, allows the institution to export data. That exporting of the data is what's referred to as publishing. And typically, the institution wants to export data to some kind of an external source. For example, it may be a national catalog or it may be another institution that for whatever reason is receiving records from a different institution either to upload it may be providing information to a vendor about certain records there could be a myriad of reasons so that's the actual publishing profile uh, we get to this page from the alma menu we access the publishing profiles from the Alma menu via resources. I'm not in the configuration menu, I'm in the Alma menu. And from here, when we do resources, under publishing, we have publishing profiles. We will, time permitting, also getting to the publishing information, but for now suffice, we're at the publishing profiles. So the main point of that is when we say publishing, because sometimes it's confusing the word publishing. So I'm stressing here, when we say publishing, we mean that we are exporting records. Okay, so it's possible to export the bibliographic records and the authority records. That's the authority records if you have local authorities. It's not publishing uh, community zone authorities, it's publishing the local authorities. Uh, let's open up a profile and we're going to make our own. And by making our own, we'll be able to more easily see exactly how it works. Okay, so the first thing we need is a set, a set of records that we want to publish. So I'm going to do an all title search here and create a set. If the institution, for example, wanted to publish all of their catalog, uh, 
you could make a set of the entire catalog. One way of making a set of the entire catalog, for example, is to take the MMS creation date and simply say uh, after and choose a date which is extremely early, such as everything created after January 1st, 1972, or you could even say 1900. And then for sure, you've got everything in the catalog. This would give me everything in the catalog. It's not typical that an institution would would publish everything in the catalog. It might be, for example, everything in the catalog which isn't suppressed or everything in the catalog which doesn't have a certain field, but here we're getting everything. Another way uh, someone could publish the entire catalog if that was the goal would be, for example, to take the MMS ID and say it's greater than zero. That too, would give the entire catalog. We're going to publish a smaller set because we're going to want to go look at the results and analyze what happened. So I'm going to take everything that has subject sermons in Latin. As Library of Congress subject, sermons, Latin. And on purpose, I'm making a set here which contains both physical inventory, uh, bibliographic records with physical inventory, such as the first and second one, and also ones with electronic inventory. Uh, for example, here, uh, macaronic sermons. And macaronic sermons is an example of one that has uh, two portfolios, because we're going to want to show some examples later of different situations. For example, how does it publish when there's one portfolio? How does it publish when there's two portfolios? And how can we control what happens? So this set here will give us a lot of different examples. And let's begin. So I'm going to save this now as a set, and then we're going to publish this set. So we'll say here, save and filter query. And we'll call this, for example, uh, gen, let's call it general publishing set morning, because we're going to have an, an evening session as well. And I'll just spell that somewhat correctly. Okay, so these are the records that we will publish today. Uh, another, not a mandatory prerequisite, however, a popular uh, prerequisite is to have a normalization process, because usually when the records are published, the institution does some kind of change on them. For example, maybe they'll remove certain fields, maybe they'll add certain fields, uh, they could change fields, etc., Typically, there is some type of change. Uh, so let's take a look at one that I already have prepared. Because our, our topic today is not how to make normalization rules and processes, I already made one in advance. So let's take a record and see what my normalization process does. And then uh, we'll use that as our example. So I'm going to edit this record and show my normalization process. And then we'll see that when the records get published, that normalization process comes into effect. So my normalization process is going to first remove the 900 fields from the record, then it's going to add them. So you can see here I have a 994, for example. I'm going to add uh, more just for the fun here, just so we have more examples. I'll say I got a 993, which is called um, something else, and maybe I'll even have a 900, which has something else. Okay, so I have three 900 fields right now. And if I run the normalization process on this, 
we're going to see that it's going to remove the 900 fields and then add my own 900 fields and my own one 900 field. And we're going to see soon that the publishing profile is going to do the same. So if I come here to editing actions and I say enhance the record just to show what my normalization process does, and I'll choose one which I made here called remove 900 to 994 fields, then add 900 from Alma University. Because I want to make a 900 field. There it is. It got rid of all the other 900s. And it added a 900 field with a subfield A sent to the National Catalog, B sent from Alma University. So I'm indicating to whoever I'm sending it to via a field where it's from and, and why. But it, it's not mandatory, but typically uh, institutions do do a normalization process during the export. Okay, so without further ado, ado, let's jump right in now and create the normalization, uh, excuse me, create the publishing profile. And I'm going to have a Word document here on the side because there are some things we're going to do in the publishing profile that afterwards I'm going to want to say, what, when we look at the results, why the results are the way they are, and it will be because of certain things we did in the publishing profile. Okay, I'm just going to check the chat, see if there's any messages, no questions or comments in the chat. So let's move on. Okay. So again, resources, publishing, publishing profiles. We're accessing the publishing profiles. And we're going to create a new one. So up on top here, add profile, general profile. And now we'll start doing it. So I'm going to call this general, or I'll just call it publishing profile one. Oh, I went into caps lock. Publishing profile one morning. Okay. And let's keep track here of some, some key things we're doing here. Okay, so scheduling. We can schedule this to run unless we say differently, and there's a checkbox soon we're going to see. Every time the publishing runs, it only includes edited, added, or deleted records. It doesn't, by default, republish the entire catalog. It publishes what's referred to as the delta. The delta is anything that changed since the last time it ran. Because if you're sending it to, a, to another system, you don't want every time to send the entire catalog. That's also possible, and we'll see. But by, by default, and typically, it doesn't do that. It sends only the new, the changed, or the deleted records. And when I say deleted, it puts a mark inside the LDR, so the place who's getting it knows it was deleted. Okay, you can run it every six hours, every Saturday, every day, et cetera, et cetera, hourly even. We're not going to schedule it. We're going to manually run it. Then we choose the set. It's possible to run it on two sets. So we'll choose the set that we just made a moment ago, which is called General Publishing Profile Set Morning. And we're not going to, let me just close that Teams. Uh, and we're going to publish here on the bibliographic level. Let me close this. Sorry about that. And we'll say on the bibliographic level. Now, there's three options here. Uh, one is the bibliographic level. That means there's one record for each bibliographic record, one record publishing, uh, one record published. Then you can also do it, the second option, holdings portfolio representation. And then there's on the level of the item portfolio. So this bibliographic level will have one published record per bibliographic record. 
the holdings portfolio representation level will have one bibliographic record per holdings record or per portfolio or per digital representation. And the last option, item portfolio, will have a bibliographic record per item. In other words, if a bibliographic record has three items and we choose item portfolio level, then that one will uh, have three bibliographic records. And we're going to see that. So it'll become more clear when we see it. And I'm going to say here that we are publishing on the bibliographic level. When we look at the results, we'll see the story on that. Okay, then output format. We can publish this in all different kinds of formats. Uh, these formats may appear differently in your institutions because this is coming from uh, what it, what's called, in technical terms, the active profile. That's which mark types, which mark profiles does my institution support? Most institutions don't have all of these, CN Mark, UN Mark, Mark 21, modes, etc. Um, we're going to choose Mark 21 bibliographic. It can be exported to an FTP server an, uh, or via OAI or via Z3950, and we're going to do it to FTP. And we'll publish it to the Xlibre Secure FTP service. That's our FTP server. Uh, many of you perhaps have seen that because we did have a session on using the Xlibre Secure FTP server. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to publish this to a directory there, which will be, I don't want to make it that long. I'll say publishing morning. That's going to be the name of my directory, publishing morning. And we'll also call this file name prefix. I'll call it also publishing morning is the file name prefix. Okay. And then we can determine what kind of format. Do we want it in binary or XML? I'm going to choose XML simply so that we can easily see the results without converting it from Mark to to mark XM, from binary to XML or to some other format using mark edit, we'll have the XML and be able to easily see what the records are. And we can also choose how many records we want in the file. For example, if there's 1 million records, having one file of a million records is not a good idea because many systems need smaller files. So we can divide it how many we want in a file. It's not relevant for us because we only have, I believe, 26 or 28 records anyway. So that's the first screen. Then we've got another screen where we can manipulate the data. First, we, de we defined on the first screen what we're publishing, how we're publishing it. For example, uh, on the bibliographic level to Mark 21 format to FTP. Now we have how do we want to change the data? Uh, so I'm going to choose here the normalization process that we saw a moment ago in the metadata editor. Then we can add more information. We can add what's called administrative information and inventory information. So administrative information, for example, uh, I will say I'm going to add management information, for example, the created by will go to the subfield A, the created date will go to the subfield B, and uh, that's enough for our purposes. So I'm going to say here, just so we know when we go look at the results, that we added management information to the 995. And we have subfield A is the created date and subfield B created by or the opposite. We'll take a look. So A is created by and then create date. Okay. 
then let's go on then we have related records enrichment so we could say we're not gonna now but if for example there's a 776 which is pointing from the physical to the online or the online to the physical or a 773 stating this is an article published in a in a journal or uh, a bound with we could include that we're not going to today authority enrichment we could also bring in um the information from the authority record into the bibliographic record we're not going to do that now either i'm choosing the most popular most used um functions in the publishing profile that's why certain ones i'm not going to do there's plenty we are doing in one hour i'm hoping to squeeze it all in but i'm just going to point out that those two exist then we have add holdings information. This we will do. So we can take information from the holdings record and put it in the bibliographic record. For example, I'm clicking add inventory enrichment. I'm going to say I want to take the 852 subfield B from the holdings record. I'm going to put it in an 852 subfield B of the bibliographic record. And also we can say, We'll take the 852 subfield C of the bibliograph of the holdings record and put that also in the 852 C. That's the library and location of the bibliographic. And let's also, while we're already here, let's take the H call number and put that also in. We're sending them to the same fields here, and let's take the I also. 852 subfield I from the holdings record will go to the 852 subfield I of the bibliographic record. So let's also point that out. We also added um, the holdings. We added the 852 B, C, H, and I. Okay. Uh, next, back to the publishing profile. And then we can add additional holdings fields. Let's do that as well. So we let's add to the 996 this time. We'll say we wanted the created by, the holdings records created by to subfield A, and the holdings record create date to be and there's many more we could do library name exclude records etc in fact let's put the library name just for the fun in here 996 c so we have created by created date and library name field so we're saying 996 a is the create date 996 b is the create by in 996C is the library name because we did copy the subfield B from the 852, but that's the code. Okay, next. Uh, physical items enrichment. Uh, here we can copy parts of the item information into the bibliographic record. Let's put here a 997. And let's say we want the item PID in the A and the barcode in the B. So we'll say here, so we know we added items information to the 997A is the item PID. That's the identifier, the internal number identifier. And to the 997B, we added the barcode. Okay, then... All of this other stuff we could add. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. We could put the description in there, the library, the pages, the internal notes, pretty much all of what's in the item. Electronic inventory enrichment, that's the portfolio inf information. So we'll say we want a 998. And again, we'll put the portfolio PID. We'll put the activation status. and 
that should do it. We could also do portfolio coverage information, but we're not going to do that today. So let's point out here. So when we look at the results, we'll know for the E inventory. We did a 998 field. You know, you spell real bad when you don't even get the option in the spell check. So here we did the 998. And let's just see what we did in the 99 portfolio PID and activation status. And subfield B is the activation status. Okay, then I think that's enough for our purposes. I'm going to save. Now let's run it. First, we'll run it, then we'll see what it's going to do, and then we're going to go look at the results and see what happened. So, and then we'll stop and take questions. So we called this something with the word morning. There we are. So I'm going to click run. Run, as the name suggests, is run, but it's different than republish because what I said before, it says it ran. What I said before, that every time, I think it's stated very clearly in the online help we'll look at, uh, what I stated before, that every time it runs, it takes only the records which were updated, deleted, or added. If we do, however, republish, then it publishes everything entirely. Starts all over. But we just did run now, and run should suffice for us. So let's go take a look at the results. First, I just want to say here, um, this explains everything that I've said so far. And you can go through here. Uh, it compares the processed records with the last published value. That's where it comes and it takes only those which are added, deleted, or updated. And we're going to do an example of that. Uh, let's go take a look. So here I am in the Xlibre Secure FTP service. We'll just confirm here that it finished, though I'm quite confident that it already did. We'll go to monitor jobs, go to history. Here it is, completed successfully 46 records, and all were, all were published. And you can see there's no deleted, no updated, because we didn't change anything or delete anything or add anything new. Okay, let's go see the results. So let me see, are we still connected here? Let me connect and we'll go see the results we're going to copy them to the pc once the file is there then we're going to open it and then we're going to see what happened comparing with our word document which explains what we did in the publishing okay so Let's go see what we call this. Here it is, Publishing Morning. So this Publishing Morning, you can see it's from right now. That's my local time on, on, the, on my PC here. 12 April, 826. That's three minutes ago, two minutes ago. So it was published. The file was published. And let's put it in this directory. I got a directory here called Miscellaneous where I put all this kind of stuff. And I'll make a new directory here called morning session and let's download that file here this is the published file i'm going to download it right here then we're going to open it up and we're going to see what's happening let me already close anything else i don't need here okay sorry i'm showing all my personal stuff sorry about that okay new one all right now we're safe okay so let's see, file, okay, file successful transferred, everything's good. So let's go take a look. Here it is. And I will do extract here. It comes as a tar GZ file. 
And if you recall, we said we want it in Mark XML. So we'll ex extract here. That'll give me the tar file. Then I'll extract again. That'll give me the XML file. Okay, so here is the file. Let's open that with Notepad++, Control-Alt-Shift-B. Okay, now remember, we published on the bibliographic level. So, for example, if we look at a record that has two items, because we're going to compare this soon, two items, a record in our set that has two items is this one here. Um, okay. The homilies of St. Jerome, uh, the physical one here, has three items even, three items, and this is the MMS ID. Let's go take a look at this record and see what happened. These are the items, and... Here's the file. So I'm going to do a control F to find this record. Here it is. I'm clicking find next. We only have it once. Found one occurrence. So it published it once, even though there are three items. We're going to see something different uh, when we publish on the item level, which we're going to do soon. So what did it do here? First, it gives out all of the bibliographic information. And let's look at the bibliographic information here. It has a 913 Church of St. Mark. However, if you recall, we used a normalization process which deletes the 900s and then adds a 900 uh, with a subfield A published to the National Catalog, pub subfield B published from Alma University. So let's go see what happened in the published record. Scrolling to the bottom. It got rid of that 913. It added the 900 sent to uh, the National Catalog. And it added a 996, 997, three 997s. Gr perfect example here. So what do we have here? 996. Let's take a look. We have... We told it to publish in the 996, in the subfield A, the created date, in the subfield B, the created by, and in the subfield C, the library name. And that's what we have. The This is the creator. This is the created date. This is the library name. And this automatically happens. This is the MMS ID of the holdings record. And so it added that. We also told it, if you recall, and we'll go look here, to add the 852 to the BCHI, not to the ANCHI, but to the BCHI. So now if we go look at subfield B, C, H, and I in the record, we have B, C, H and I, those are from the holdings records, and it added again the subfield eight. Then we have three occurrences of the 997, because in the 997, we said add physical item information. And we said here, let's go take a look. We said add the PID to subfield A and the barcode to subfield B. So here we have the PID and the barcodes. The barcodes are AU66115, AU61114, AU66085. If we come here, those are the numbers of our barcodes. And by the way, if we open one of these up, um, this is our item ID. 227499. And then if we come here, 
to the record, 227499 here. Okay, so that's the publishing on the item level. Typically, if there's one uh, item, there'll be 1997. Not typically, that's what will happen because there's a 997 per item. But I'm pointing out here on purpose that we have one bibliographic record. Okay, um, let's look at an example of a portfolio. If we come here into Alma and we look for macaronic sermons Latin. Okay, so here we have two portfolios for macaronic sermons, which is this MMS ID. We looked at one that had two items. Now we're looking at one that has two portfolios. So let's go see what's going to happen here. And let's take a look. So we'll go back. Did I copy that? Yes. We'll come back here. And here's our record. Again, it's only giving one occurrence. Published once. And if we scroll down here, we have a 998. The 998 is what we added for the portfolios. Let's go take a look. So, here we are. We added for the portfolios in subfield A, the PID, and in subfield B, the activation status. So, let's go see what we got. 998, that's the PID, that's the activation status. One is available, one is not available, and the subfield 8 automatically got the PID, which we put in anyway. So, and if we look here, one is available and one is not, just like in Alma. Okay, I want to do another example, publishing on the item level. However, I'm going to stop. And if anyone has a question, you can send them in. Let me just look over the questions and let's see. I'm just looking at the questions. Okay. So someone asks, let me take this. Let me put it in the words so everyone can see. And of course, all of these are going to be anonymous. So someone asks, is the output bibliographic format should be as the input format, or can we publish Mark 21 to Dublin Core? No, you should publish. It's not doing a... Let's wait. We'll do an example. That'll be easier to easier to do an example than to explain. So we'll do an example. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, let me copy this one. Hold on, I got the person's name here and I want to prevent having people's names. So let me copy that again. Okay. Someone else asks when AP01 changes to AP02. Okay, that's just a on the side here the one of the instances is moving to another instance because so many new Alma customers in, in a certain uh, uh, area that we're we're making another instance in a data center. The publishing's profile schedule, which only does new change Dell, should we stop redo? No, you don't have to do anything. Regard when you change from one instance to another instance, you don't have to worry about any of changing your publishing profiles. Um, things aren't going to automatically get reset. You can continue as normal. Okay. Let's go do an example here. First, I'm going to take this other example of the person who asked about bibliographic formats in Mark 21. Um, 
Well, let's first do the, the item level. Uh, I want to compare a situation where we have a record with multiple items. We're going to take just one item now because it'll be simpler. One item which we're going to publish on the bibliographic level and one item we're going to publish on the item level. So let's take this one record, which was, let's look for physical titles. And we'll say Jerome Sermons Latin. So this is one bibliographic record with three items. Three of three. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to call it one bib, three items. Everyone still with me, by the way? It's a little quiet out there. Just let me know if you still hear me, everybody. Anybody? Okay, one person hears me. Anybody else hear me? <laughs> We'll assume you do, and you're just not typing yes. Okay. Okay, now, now we're getting some answers. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm just going to call it one bib three items. That's just the easiest way to explain what's going to happen. And save. One bib three items. Let's go make a publishing profile on that two different ways. So we're going to resources. Publishing profiles, we're going to go through a little quicker now because we already see how the publishing profiles are made. So this will be called one bib three items on bib level. We're going to publish this on the bib level. And we'll take that set that we just made. One bib three items. And we're going to choose bibliographic level. And again, we'll send it to the same FTP. And we'll send it to subdirectory, what did we call it before, morning this. And we'll give it file name prefix, one bib <coughs> three items bib level so it'll be easy for us to compare next we'll run our rule and we'll add uh item information <coughs> we'll put the barcode in the 997b save okay so that's on the bib level and we'll run it then we'll make another one, and we'll call this one bib, three items on item level. And again, we'll choose the same set that we just made. Then we're going to say item level now. And it tells us, please note, that a bibliographic record will be published per item slash portfolio. Let's go to the FTP. Send it to the same place. Send it to the same subdirectory. However, this time the file name prefix will be one bib, three items, item level. So we'll be able to compare very easily. Again, we'll run the rule and we'll send physical items enrichments to the 997 and we'll send the barcode to the subfield B just like we did last time. So the only difference is that one of these is on the bib level, one of these is on the item level. Everything else is the same. And let's do run. And let's do run. And person who asked what happens if I send this out to Dublin Core, just for the fun, 
let's say add profile, general profile, and I'm going to say Mark in DC. And then we'll get them all running. Then we'll go look at them all. So we're going to take that same record. It's a Mark record. And we'll say output format Dublin Core. FTP, same FTP, same directory. We'll call the file prefix mark to DC. Does that answer your question, what we're doing now, uh, person who asked before I send it? You still there, person who asked? You asked, is the output bibliography? Okay, she wrote a letter, which is in another language. Okay. And let's move on, and let's see. So we will save this and save. Okay, and let's run that one as well. So we're going to run them all now. Run that one. And admin monitor jobs. Okay, so they all ran. Let's go take a look. I see I ran this one twice, twice in a row. So the second time it didn't do anything, but the first time it did. So let's go take a look. Publishing morning. Morning 2022-03. Where, where are we? What directory did we do? I don't even remember. Here it is. Okay. So. I called this 2022-03-14, but that's not even today's date. In any case, we've got our files. So let's take these files now and put these on our PC and start analyzing. So I'll put them here and we'll see what's going on. They're now transferring. There we are, starting download, file transfer successful, file transfer successful. Okay. Let's start with the one that we did, the mark record that we published to Dublin Core. Just so we can see. Um, what it did, 7-zip, I'm going to extract here. And then we're going to extract again. Seven zip extract. Here's the XML. And it, it converts it to Dublin Core. You can see now that same record, the subject sermon Latins, it transfers it to Dublin Core. Uh, does that answer your question, person who asked the question? Okay, she says, he, he or she says yes. Okay, so now let's look at the other ones. And let's open now the one on the item level. Okay, my Teams is showing. Oh, thanks for letting me know about that. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I hope there was nothing. Uh, I think it was in Hebrew anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so let's open now the other one. Okay. Back to here. Now the one in the items level. I'm going to open these simultaneously next to each other. Let's first extract them. 7-zip extract here. And 7-zip extract here. Okay, and let's do it also on the bib level.
Um, oh, that one I already did. So we're going to do items level. 7-zip extract here. Sorry about this. And this one here. Okay, so let's open now this one and this one. Reminding for people, the first one is called one bib, three items, bib level. The next one is called one bib, three items, item level. The second one, we changed the publishing way on the level of the item because we want to compare what happens. I could just explain it, but it's always better to compare them like this. So I'm going to change this one to pretty print. Okay, so that looks nice. And we'll change this one to pretty print. That's what it's called. I didn't make it up. It's called pretty print. Okay, so let's see what happened here. This is the one on the bib level. If I take this MMS ID and I look for it, it appears only once. The bib record is published once and the field that we added is published once for each item however when we published it on the items level first of all you can see it's a much larger file if i look here there's the first one on line seven there's the second one on line 135 there's the third one on line 263 and each one, so we have a bib record, first of all, we have a bib record per item. And then we also have the 997 is only added once each time for that item. So that's showing the difference between publishing on the bib level and publishing on the item level. We publish on the bib level, we get one bibliographic record, regardless of how many items there are. When we publish on the item level we get one bib record for each item and whatever fields we're creating with the item information automatically get only that specific added field in this case for this barcode and then this one will have for a different barcode okay let's do one more thing let me see if there's any more questions I don't see any more questions here. So let's do one more thing. Our first profile that we made today, uh, I forgot already what it was called. I think it was called Morning Something. Yes, this one. This we ran this morning. Yes, 726. Yep, that's, a, that's the time. Um, so now... If I update one record in there, I'm not going to say uh, we're going to run it. Let me go to here. Hold on a moment. What's today? 12 April. There it is. Publishing profile one morning. So this one here, we didn't schedule it. Um, and we ran it on the bib level. So I'm going to take this set, general publishing set morning, and I'm going to update one record. Let's go to that set. Admin, general publishing set morning, manage sets. Here it is. I'll say catalog set. Ah, uh, let's get just a specific one. I'll do results. Okay, so I'll take this to Christmas sermons, and I'll edit this. I'll say um, 264. I'll I'll add another 500 here. F8 500. This sermon was also delivered in Taipei, Taiwan. 
And let's add another 650. F8, 650, just so we have something changing here. F3. And select. Okay. Save. So one record in that set now was edited. It changed. Release. Now, let's go to that publishing profile. And let's publish it. And I'm going to say run. Okay, we ran it. By the way, if we wanted to republish all of it, we would click republish. And then I could say either a date range, anything that changed, added, or deleted within a date range. Or I could say rebuild the entire index or just part of it. But let's not get into all that now. But I could republish the entire set this way. Let's go see if it ran. Let me show one other thing just for the general knowledge. When we create a set, we can also say, excuse me, when we create a profile, we can also say at the beginning uh, to always publish. Uh, FTP, here it is. It's also possible here, include all records each time the file is published. So we could also say, every time it runs, always publish all records. And that's explained here also. Typically, records which were not modified since the last run are not published. If we do want to publish all the records, we could select this option. It'll publish all the non-deleted records in the set, regardless of if they changed or not. If this parameter is not selected, which by default and in all of our examples it wasn't, only records that were modified, created, or deleted since the last run will be, will be published. So let's go see what happened here. Let's go to the monitor jobs. It ran only one record was processed because I only changed one record. Let's go see. Here we are in the file Zilla. Connecting. Using username. Hold on. Up here we can see it's connecting. Okay, there we go. So now, 856, this is the old one from 826, when it published the whole set. Here's the one from now from 856. You can see it's a much smaller file. Let's go take a look. I'm going to put this in a separate directory so we know this is ours. I will say new folder after editing one record. We'll put it in there. Okay, and that's downloading. We have one minute for it to download and for it to open. There it is. Extract here and extract here. So this should have only the record about the Christmas because that's the only one we changed. Control Alt Shift B. And here it is. It's got one record. It's the record we changed that we added the 500 field and we added the 650. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of the session. Are there any final questions or comments? Let me close that again. Any final questions or comments before we finish up here? Okay, so thanks everybody, and we will be posting the recording. Have a nice day.